And the next item of business is a statement by Tom Arthur on a retail strategy for uh, Scotland. The Minister will take uh, questions at the end of his statement. Therefore, there should be no uh, interruptions or interventions. And I call on the Minister for around 10 minutes, Mr Arthur. Presiding officer, I am pleased to be able to announce the publication of our retail strategy for Scotland today. This strategy recognises the importance of retail to Scotland's communities, society, environment and economy. It has been developed in collaboration with business, trade unions, academia and the public sector, and I am thankful for the contributions of each person involved. Our shops often support neighbourhoods and communities, whether in cities or towns, rural areas or our islands, where the local shop is often the provider of lifeline products. We attract people into towns and cities, supporting other economic sectors such as tourism, culture and hospitality. Retail also offers many people successful and flexible careers, from a first job in a local shop through distribution, supply chain businesses, large stores, ownership or management. With over 240,000 employees, almost 10 per cent of Scotland's entire workforce, retail is our largest private sector employer, contrib contributing £6.1 billion GVA to the Scottish economy in 2019. There are over 15,500 retail businesses in Scotland, a growth of almost 2,000 since 2018. A strong, prosperous and vibrant retail sector is essential to fulfilling the vision of a well-being economy as we set out in Scotland's National Strategy for Economic Transformation. There is no doubt, though, that our retailers and their staff have had a challenging time over the last two years. I have been incredibly grateful for so many going above and beyond for their customers and the most vulnerable in society during this exceptional period. Since the COVID-19 pandemic started, the Scottish Government has done what it can to help business, including providing more than £4.5 billion of support. We are the only Government in the UK to offer 100 per cent rates relief for the past two years without any cap, and are preventing a cliff-edge return to full liability by extending that support for retail through, relief, through rates relief for the first three months of 2022-23. And we are supporting our high streets through the £10 million Scotland Loves local programme and the £80 million COVID Economic Recovery Fund, which encourages people to use and support their local businesses. The pandemic has accelerated longer term trends, such as online shopping, sustainable practices and the changing face of the high street. There remain challenges ahead with staff shortages, rising inflation and the growing squeeze on living standards and business costs as a result of global trends and, of course, Brexit. A retail strategy sets out actions designed to support the sector, rebuild after COVID, address longer-term challenges and maximise opportunities to fulfil its potential. As we have seen during the pandemic, our retailers have been agile and creative in their response to meeting customer needs. Many have expanded their online and delivery capability. Many have switched to more ethical and sustainable products, packaging, sourcing and distribution. There are more retail businesses now than before the pandemic. That innovative and enterprising spirit will stand the sector in good stead as it evolves to meet the challenges and opportunities of the future. Having set out in our strategic framework update, how we will move beyond the pandemic, the time is right for publishing this strategy. It builds on the National Strategy for Economic Transformation and COVID Recovery Strategy, setting out a shared vision for retail to become an exemplar for inclusive economic growth and play its part in creating a fairer, greener Scotland. The retail strategy seeks to do this by building on the strengths of the sector, so that it is successful, resilient, sustainable and profitable to the benefit of all in Scotland. We want to support innovation and entrepreneurship, 
and seize opportunities from new technologies and markets to boost productivity and grow businesses. In this way, our retailers can benefit from and contribute to the bold programme of actions that will transform our economy over the next decade. At the heart of this and a successful sector are our people. As we further orient our economy towards well-being and fairness to significantly re reduce poverty, we want to make fair work and skills development cornerstones of retail in Scotland. We want all retail workers to have fulfilling and secure jobs. As I said in my statement to Parliament on 24 October last year, the retail strategy will have fair work at its core, benefiting retail businesses by making them more attractive to workers and more resilient, productive and profitable. Unfortunately, employment law is currently reserved to the UK Government. With these powers, we could do more to protect and enhance workers' rights, tackle poverty and increase fairness through legislation. However, we are determined to do all we can with the powers we do have to make a difference. And I can announce today that we will work in collaboration with the sector and trade unions to deliver a fair work agreement that retailers can sign up to and demonstrate an ongoing commitment to fair work principles. This includes providing good quality secure employment and giving employees an effective voice. In doing so, I expect employers will take action to improve fair work conditions across retail and contribute to the reduction of in-work poverty. Retail is a great choice for many. It offers opportunities for entry into the workforce, career progression and flexible working. It is vital that our workers have the right skills to have rewarding and secure careers and to grow businesses. This means strong customer service skills, which drive sales and business profitability. It also means new skills, for example, to harness the potential of new technology, such as self-scan checkouts and online order systems. That is why we will work with Skills Development Scotland, the Scottish Funding Council and other partners to develop a retail skills audit and action plan. It will support reskilling or upskilling as jobs change to meet the needs of retail businesses and the careers of the people they employ. A further aim is to strengthen retail's contribution to the economic and social success of our local communities. Different locations have bespoke needs, and our retail sector has a pivotal role in helping to create and maintain successful places. We know the pandemic has driven down football, footfall in some places, while others, including many local high streets, have thrived. There are already a number of place-based programmes to support retailers, such as Scotland Loves Local and Business Improvement Districts. The actions in this strategy will support our retailers to think local, to work collaboratively with their communities and support local businesses and supply chains where possible, to promote town and city centres and consider creative responses to vacant retail units. In doing so, we believe that will build greater well-being in our neighbourhoods, town and city centres. Presiding officer, reducing Scotland's carbon footprint is essential to achieving our climate change targets and securing a just transition to a net zero economy by 2045. Our retailers have a crucial role in this. Through building secure local supply chains, adopting circular practices, increasing repair and reuse options and improving sustainable operations. Many retailers are already decarbonising their supply chains, setting their own net zero targets and encouraging customers to lead lower carbon lifestyles, which is great to see. This strategy builds on that. We will, for example, develop a just transition plan for retail that will progress an environmentally and socially sustainable sector in the economy of the future. Presiding officer, this strategy rightly has a strong delivery focus, and we as a government will play our part in that. However, we cannot and should not be the sole vehicle for change. That is why we will establish a new industry leadership group for retail. Building on the collaboration involved in creating this strategy, 
the industry leadership group will oversee the development and delivery of strategy commitments, such as those I have just mentioned. It will focus on the actions in the National Strategy for Economic Transformation that will directly support the retail sector. The leadership group will also agree a delivery plan which will include a critical review process and timelines for measuring success. I will co-chair the group and look forward to this work getting underway. The title of this strategy, Getting the Right Change, is more than a play on words. Let me be clear, the publication of this strategy is just the beginning. It is the start of a new conversation with businesses and trade unions, customers and workers about how to support our retailers overcome the challenges and seize opportunities as we rebuild after COVID, about how our recovery should improve the lives of people and their families, people who work in retail and the customers they serve. Our vision is for a thriving, successful and profitable retail sector in Scotland that is an exemplar of inclusive economic growth. This strategy can make that vision a reality, ensure that we do indeed get the right change. Thank you. The Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we will move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if those members who wish to ask a question were to press the request to speak buttons now, and also at the same time to check, in fact, that their cards are in. I call Liz Smith. Thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Minister for early sight of the statement? Could I also welcome the collaborative approach, um, because uh, he knows as well as uh, the rest of us that towards the end of last year, business and industry were saying that the Scottish Government hadn't consulted them enough. So it's good to hear that uh, there is a change in direction to address their concerns. I've really got three areas of questioning. Firstly, uh, on a short-term uh, basis, obviously businesses are desperate for support as quickly as possible. So can I ask the Minister, what um, analysis has been taking place of some of the successful schemes, for example, in Northern Ireland with the High Street scheme, uh, which is obviously proven to be uh, generally very successful? And can I also ask what analysis has uh, been undertaken about the bid systems in Scottish towns? Because I'm aware in Mid-Scotland and Fife of some that have been particularly successful, but sadly there are others that have not been uh, successful. And I think it's interesting as to why some have worked and why some have not worked, so I'd be interested in what the Minister has got to say about that. Secondly, can I ask what commitment the Scottish Government has made to look at the uh, transportation uh, issues, because people are not going to come to some of our uh, town centres uh, unless there is good quality uh, transport availability. So I'd be interested to know uh, what discussions uh, the Minister is having with his colleagues in the transport portfolio. And then, finally, on a long-term basis, um, obviously there has to be a commitment to try to uh, uh, address some of the uh, rising costs that business uh, is facing. I think that's the main concern that they uh, have. And does the Scottish Government have a, a, a firm plan to look at a reform and a modernisation of the business rate system, which many businesses find extremely complex. Minister. Um, can I thank uh, Liz Smith for her question, and can I also welcome her support for the collaborative approach we are taking through an industry leadership group? And indeed, it is that collaborative approach that is going to be fundamental to realising the ambitions on this strategy. To address the points in um, order that Liz Smith raised, um, she asked about short-term interventions, and particularly how, we, how our analysis of these interventions is informed. We have, of course, provided, as outlined in the statement, a range of support over the uh, past two years throughout the pandemic. Most recently was the £80 million um, COVID Economic Recovery Fund, which has been provided to local authorities. Now, clearly, there is an opportunity there for local authorities to support um, businesses within their areas in a way that they think is most specific. And one point I would note is reference was made to the voucher scheme in Northern Ireland. We have the Scotland Loves Local Fund. We have the Scotland Loves Local Gift Card. Glasgow City Council, I know, is looking at this as a mechanism of delivering support. 
So what is fundamental in, in, for, for me is to ensure that local authorities, and working in partnership with local authorities who were members of the stadium, there was local authority engagement throughout um, the uh, process of de designing this um, strategy via the steering group, is to ensure that there is that flexibility there. Because while there are certain common challenges that retail will face in all parts of Scotland, some of the challenges will be unique to particular lo localities. So ensuring we provide that support to local authorities to enable them to support and work with business. And that often happens through other ways as well. There's the place-based investment programme, which obviously provides capital support. And then there's the Scotland Loves Local um, programme as well, £10 million over five years. With regards to business improvement districts, we are very grateful for the work that Scotland's Towns Partnership undertakes in delivering um, business improvement districts. We've provided over £500,000 support throughout the pandemic to support bids. We recognise there have been some challenges and I'm committed to continuous engagement with Scotland's Towns Partnership to learn what lessons we have from the pandemic, how we can strengthen the support that we provide for bids. On the issue of transport and access to town centres, some of this will be captured within what we're doing around the Town Centred Action Plan, which is forthcoming. And Ms Smith will also be aware of our transport um, aspirations um, with regards to, for example, 20-minute neighbourhoods as contained within the Draft National Planning Framework 4, as consistent with the uh, sustainable travel hierarchy as set in the National Transport Strategy 2. So we fundamentally recognise that it's important. Ultimately, what we want to see with regards to development is an infrastructure-first approach, town centre, um, a town centre-first assessment, which again has been long-standing, but is a, bit a fundamental part of our approach to 20-minute neighbourhoods within the National Planning Framework. So that is something that is fundamental to our thinking um, as regards to 20-minute neighbourhoods. And on the long-term issue of the issues um, around um, non-domestic rates, I appreciate there was um, some lengthy exchanges over this matter at the Finance Committee on Tuesday. Our position is that what businesses require right now and what they ask, have asked for is stability. We do have a revaluation forthcoming. However, as I said at, stated at Finance Committee, we very much welcome the work undertaken by Fraser of Allender in their review of the Small Business Bonus Scheme. And while we are committed to the Small Business Bonus Scheme for this parliamentary term, we are going to establish a short life working group to reflect upon and to consider the report that Fraser of Allender Institute have provided. And I think we would all recognise that more data will allow us to be more bespoke in the design of our policies and make sure that all of our policy interventions on non domestic rates and other taxes deliver the maximum impact that we want to see. I call uh, Daniel Johnson, who is joining us remotely. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I apologise to the team for not being a, 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 there in person in what I consider to be an incredibly important statement? Uh, can I also remind the Chamber of my register of interest? I'm a director of a, a company with uh, residual uh, retail interests, and I'm also a member of the trade union uh, USDA. Um, I, I would really welcome uh, this report uh, very earnestly. Uh, and I would ref uh, say that I very much agree with the preamble provided by the Minister, but I would also add one important element. Retail is fundamentally the interface where people's salaries get uh, recycled uh, into the productive economy. And therefore, retaining retail is vital, not just for the people employed in retail or the people obtaining goods and services from them, but for the whole of the, the supply chain and the productive economy. And I think this uh, report is useful. I think it identifies uh, the right area. Um, what I would question is whether it, it identifies clear and new steps to address those. Uh, firstly, in productivity and technology, we know that there is a significant issue, especially among small retailers, in terms of technology uptake. So why are there no new initiatives identified to provide the flexible and clear support that they need? Likewise, on skills, I would say that we need more than just an audit of skills programmes. Uh, I, and I would wonder whether or not the new leadership group could have been empowered to design and deploy new skills programmes that would deliver the focus and flexibility that retail employers say is currently lacking. Uh, on uh, town centres and place, the linkage between office workers and retail football is key. So in the short term, will the Scottish Government undertake a public reassurance programme to encourage people to get back into the offices and deliver footfall? And will this element be incorporated into future iterations? And finally, can I just say, uh, reiterate the points around business rates? As was discussed at committee, the link between non-domestic rates and business performance in retail, uh, and indeed even bus business rents in the retail sector is broken. Does the Scottish Government not realise that it needs to fundamentally review this levy? 
Um, thank you. And before I call on the Minister to respond, could I just point out that we have used up quite a lot of the limited time available with front bench uh, questions and answers. And whilst I will allow a bit of latitude, we really need to allow all MSPs who wish to ask a question to have their chance. So could I please now call for succinct answers, Minister, and further succinct questions when I call other members. Minister. Um, certainly, I will endeavour to be succinct, but I am happy to meet with any member who would wish to discuss any aspect of the strategy in more de detail when they have had further time to consider it. So, just to address the specific points that Daniel Johnson raid, raised, yes, we have a commitment to a skills audit, but that also is going to be followed up with an action plan that we will deliver in, in partnership. We will develop in partnership with uh, Skills Audit Scotland, uh, Skills Development Scotland, with the SFC and other partners, and the ILG will lead on that particular work as well. Um, he's absolutely correct to go and recognise the essential role that retail plays, but it's fundamental and as part of the broader ecosystem of our town centres and city centres. He touched on the point regarding the return to office. Obviously, it will be for businesses to take a hybrid approach, and I think we would all recognise that the experience of hybrid working has proven to be very useful and beneficial for many people. And so individual businesses, along with public sector organisations, will take their own decisions about how they move forward in incorporating a hybrid working going forward. But what I want to be absolutely clear on is I would encourage people to go out and to shop in their high streets and city centres and support their local businesses. I have already touched on the points around business rates and my answer to Liz Smith, so I will not repeat. The final point I would just make, again, with regards to encouraging people into town centres, there is community wealth building features throughout this strategy, and there is the power of anchor institutions, both public sector and private sector, to play a role in drawing people into our localities, which can support retail and the wider economy. I I call Siobhan Bryan to be followed by Jamie Hawker Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I welcome the Minister's statement. With our town centres struggling for many years with a combination of online shopping and industrial shopping estates opening up out with town centres, can I ask if the Minister agrees with me that small independent retail businesses play a crucial role in providing essential services for our communities? Minister. Um, absolutely, I agree entirely. Um, there is a crucial role for small retail businesses, and that has been exceptionally apparent during the pandemic, when they have provided lifeline goods and services, um, including to those who are vulnerable or shielding. And I would want to reiterate my thanks to all those who have gone above and beyond for the communities they serve. The actions in this strategy will support our retailers to think local, work collaboratively in their communities, and support local businesses and supply chains in line with the community wealth building approach. As I said in my statement, this is a people-centred approach to local economic development, which seeks to ensure wealth is less extracted, but rather more redirected back into the local economy. Jamie Halker johnson to be followed by Christine Graham. Uh, can the Minister advise us who will make up the new industry leadership group for retail, how progress, uh, progressed they are with appointing a co-chair, and when he expects the first meeting will take place? Minister. I will update Parliament in due course, but my aspiration is that the ILG will meet for the first time prior to summer recess. Christine Graham, to be followed by Claire Baker. Thank you, Deputy President. Officer. Minister, I put on record my support and thanks to all the small retailers in Midlothian, South Tweedy and Lauderdale for coming through the terrible challenges of COVID. But can I ask, given the vital contribution they make to the well-being of our town centres and the local economy in Melrose, Gallus Hills, Peebles and Pedigook, for example, how can my small business retailers contribute to Scottish Government thinking and the strategy? Minister. Can I thank Christine Graham for her question? Key to that is going to be the industry leadership group, which I have outlined in the statement. Um, there will be an opportunity for the direct uh, for industry leaders to feed into that, as well as trade union representation. But I want to see a wider conversation and discussion follow on from the publication of this retail strategy. And I would encourage everyone involved in the retail sector, both those who are employed within the sector and all of us who use the sector, to feed into this approach. Um, and I am happy to go and meet with the member and discuss in more detail, as I am happy to meet with any member across the chamber to discuss further. Claire Baker, who is joining us remotely, to be followed by Gordon MacDonald. Um, thank you, President Officer. Um, following the collapse of major retailers or the rationalisation of some of the larger retailers by closing stores, how will the retail strategy deal with the ownership of large empty units, which I see across my own region, that avoids speculation and incentivises investment? Minister. Um, it's an excellent question. At the heart of that is going to be around our community wealth building approach. 
Obviously, we want to stimulate our local economies to see you know, increased demand for um, vacant units. But there is a range of actions that we are going to be taking to help realise that. Community wealth building is going to be a central element. Some of the things we are going to be doing around planning reform as well, um, land assembly and compulsory purchase, our support for regeneration through the place-based investment programme. So there is a range of measures that are going to be taking place. But fundamental, we need to increase demand for units, and that is about stimulating the local economies and the community wealth building approach, which is well embedded in many local authorities across Scotland, is going to be central to that. We have seen us move from an extractive model to a model which sees more wealth circulating locally and retained by local communities. Gordon Macdonald, to be followed by Beatrice Bishop. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The retail sector has and is facing sustained damage caused by Brexit, the pandemic, the cost of living increase crisis, and now the war in Ukraine. Given the impact on business costs and produce availability, how optimistic is the Minister that this retail strategy is comprehensive enough to provide confidence to the retail sector? Minister. Um, it, it's an excellent question. We are living in unprecedented times and have been really for the last five years. What I want to be clear on is this strategy is not a panacea. It does recognise and diagnose some of the long-term um, systemic challenges that the retail sector has been facing. But, of course, Mr McDonald is absolutely right to highlight the challenges that we are facing through the cost of living. That is why this will be a living document and why the ILG, one of the first tasks it will have following its establishment, is to develop a delivery plan. And that can take into account emerging events, including, for example, the cost of living crisis. Beatrice Wishart to be followed by Colette Stevenson. Rural, remote and island areas rely on local shops, which are often at the heart of the community, and I too pay tribute to their hard work. But they are also faced with barriers such as high delivery costs, minimum ordering that does not always align with storage and sales capacity limits, and planning that allows new supermarkets to be built on their doorsteps. So can the Minister assure me that the issues facing local community shops like those found in my constituent and in other island and rural areas will be listened to through the new leadership group and ensure their voices aren't squeezed out. Minister. Absolutely, and I want to give that assurance to Beatrice Wisher that the industry leadership group will not just be representative of the breadth and diversity of the sector, but also the breadth and uh, diversity of the geography of Scotland and the different localities. I collect Stevenson to be followed by Maggie Chapman. Like other places, the retail sector in East Kilbride has been struggling for years, with companies like Debenhams going bust and others reducing the numbers of stores. Can the Minister outline how the retail strategy will benefit towns like East Kilbride with a shopping centre rather than a high street and help revitalise what is a really important part of our town? Minister. Yes, absolutely. At the heart of this it is, is to so much of our approach in um, local economic development as a place-based approach. You know, creating communities and places people want to visit, live and shop in will be vital to our COVID recovery, not only for retail, but for culture, hospitality and tourism too. Whether in high streets or in shopping centres, retail is vital to our local communities. And so the losses of anchor stores does have an impact, as the member highlights. We want retail businesses in all our locations in our local communities to be successful and profitable by being more productive and innovative, supporting entrepreneurship and driving business growth. The shopping centre in East Bride, as with other towns, has good public transport connections and a large community living in close uh, proximity. There are also a number of place-based programmes which can support retailers and shopping centres, such as Scotland's Love, uh, Scotland Loves Local and Business Improvement Districts, both supported by Scotland's Towns Partnership. I call Maggie Chapman to be followed by Douglas Thompson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I thank the Minister for his statement and for the, dis the helpful discussions we have had about the strategy prior to today. We are all aware of the challenges of automation in relation to job destruction, so I am pleased to see that the strategy discusses opportunities for automation to drive up product standards and reduce waste. Can the Minister outline his thinking about how automation can also improve working conditions in retail and help us meet wider sustainability goals, and can he confirm what trade union representation will be on the industry leadership group? Minister. I am sorry, I did not pick up the very last part of Maggie Chapman's question. Uh, Minister, please resume your seat. Maggie Chapman, could you possibly repeat just the last part of your question? Thank of you. course. Th thank you. Uh, apologies. Can you confirm what trade union representation will be on the industry leadership group? Thank you. Minister. 
Yes, well, on that particular point, I've already had very constructive in, in conversations with Tracy Gilbert at USDAW, and, and USDAW will be invited to be part of the group, and I'll be looking at ways to ensure maximum worker representation on the group. And I do, of course, welcome any views from members across the chamber. Broadly, on the point of automation, um, my chairman is absolutely correct. It can be easy to focus on automation as something that displaces jobs rather than augment jobs. So I think that's one of the, the opportunities we face in retail, is that augmentation to drive up standards, drive up quality, create new jobs that are more fulfilling and create opportunities. That's why we're going to take forward the skills audit and the skills action plan. And it's also why the strategy aligns with our national strategy for economic transformation, particularly around our measures to drive up productivity. And I look forward to taking these conversations forward in the ILG and more widely with members across the chamber. I call Douglas Lumsden to be followed by Stephanie Callaghan. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The strategy document claims that the Scottish Government has delivered future-proofed mobile and broadband connectivity in remote, rural and island communities the length and breadth of Scotland. That claim is laughable. So as the Minister responsible for Scotland's digital strategy, when will the Scottish Government deliver on its R100 commitments and ensure rural retailers can take full advantage of the opportunities of doing business online? Minister. Well, actually, we are taking action as a government, and I would also remind the member that telecommunications is a reserve matter. If only we had more powers in this parliament, we could do far more. Stephanie Cal and the last uh, question was Stephanie Callaghan, please. President officer, um, I agree this retail strategy represents a real opportunity to positively advance Scotland's wellbeing economy. So can I ask the Minister how this strategy will feed into Scotland's broader vision of an, e an economic system that is based on wellbeing, fair work and community empowerment? Minister. Presiding officer, a strong, prosperous and vibrant retail sector is essential to the vision of a wellbeing economy, described in Scotland's new 10 years national strategy for economic transformation. The retail strategy contains both current initiatives and future actions that will help to fulfil that vision and rebuild after COVID in a fair and sustainable way. Supporting all retailers to align with the community wealth building approach is important. This includes local ownership and hiring of staff, adoption of fair work practices, engaging with community organisations and considering local enterprises within the supply chain, which are important elements. This helps to ensure that local people and businesses have a genuine stake in producing, owning and enjoying, and enjoying the wealth they create. Moving us closer to the more just, equitable and sustainable society we want as we rebuild our post-COVID-19 economy in Scotland. Thank you, Minister. And that concludes the Statement of Retail Strategy for Scotland. And I thank members and the Minister for their cooperation. Uh, it is now time to move on to the next item of business.